Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And mark this day on your calendar. This does not happen very often. We actually have a Marvel star agreeing with fans. Mm -hmm. uh, we have She-Hulk star Jamila Jamil. Is that how you pronounce your name? Defending Marvel fans uh, saying normally they're right. The fans are normally right. And uh, this is over her costume in She-Hulk. Uh, she's uh, Titania, I believe. Well, we have that, but we also had some of the She-Hulk producers talking about um, the CGI criticism, and a couple of them have some valid points. And then we have the one girl, and she's like, "Oh, it's because she's a woman." Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I uh, gotta give a hat tip to Mr. Milo on Pirates and Princesses who put an article up and put this on our radar. Um, are they learning? Is is Disney starting to learn? Is Marvel starting no, to learn? No, wait till you wait you wait till you hear what the critic well, oh, okay. yeah, just wait, just wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That is some of them some of them some of them are valid. And then, then there's the one lady okay. who learned nothing. All right. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over two hundred and seventy three thousand mm -hmm. subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, we do talk about Marvel. We talk about Disney having worked in around the company for a number of years. Uh, we've been following Phase 4 slash 5. Have we? Have we, though? The That's decline. That's most of the drama, the yeah. The decline. And, and I have completely checked out from Marvel. Well, I kind of wanted to see this one, but now I'm kind of, like, afraid to because it is coming across like, I'm a woman, so I'm automatically better. And I'm like, That's not. that's not fun. So this is the, um, I think, the second time then that she's actually gone to bat because they said that you know fans were right about the costume for her character. The, C the CGI looked bad for She-Hulk initially. Now, the last trailer, it looked like they kind of fixed it. And look, let's be fair, because all these uh, all these articles are going up. They're like, men are angry that She-Hulk exists. Men are misogynist. She-Hulk has she been popular for years. And a yeah. lot of men who like the She-Hulk comic, a lot of them are excited when She-Hulk was announced. It's something to do with the comic. No, and then... They like She-Hulk normally. Yeah, She-Hulk was huge. She's crazy days. popular. Everybody keeps talking about how they were excited about it until they found out that Disney was going to ruin it. People don't understand how popular She-Hulk was back in back in the 80s when John Byrne uh, was working on the book. But, um, you know, they're trying to turn it into another misogyny thing. And then they're like, well, they wouldn't criticize the, the, the effects of a male Hulk light show. Actually... The original Hulk movie from 2004, everybody said he looked like Shrek. Well, like, it, there's a there's, lot of criticism. Yeah, this is a load of shit. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to this. So you're going to have to lead me through this okay. one. Okay. So Explain. apparently, apparently, Mr. Marlow posted this, and apparently um, there were three people they talked to at, at, I think it was San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. And they said that um, they were talking about, you know, the, the, the controversy around the CGI. Mm -hmm. And they had different people that were part of the show talking. And they had three producers, Kat, was it Coro, Jessica Gao, and Tatiana Mad Madlani. Is, and I think Tatiana Madlani, isn't she one of the stars of the show? Or she's a producer. She's, I think... I think she's one of the stars on the show. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the, the first person, in terms of the CGI being critiqued, I think that has to do with our culture's belief in its ownership of women's bodies. Mm -hmm. That's not why they critiqued CGI. It looked like dog crap. <laughs> I think awful. a lot of the... What, what about me? Do you think I don't like my own body because, you know... Oh, man. Spy Kids is really sending a message then. Because the CGI is bad. the CGI is horrible. Yeah, that's right. They just hate, they hate women. I think a lot of the critique comes from feeling like they're able to tear apart the CGI woman. No, it's because it didn't look, it looked creepy and weird. There's a lot of talk about her body type, and we based it on Olympian athletes, not bodybuilders. Well, according to a lot of the, the, the leak that was out from the people that worked on her, that the reason she looked wonky was because they were told to make her skinnier. And not so muscular. Oh, interesting. Remember, yeah. Didn't you remember that? Yeah. yeah but I yeah. think if we had gone the other way, we'd be facing the same critique. I think it's very hard to win when you make women's bodies. Let's talk about Encanto. Let's talk about Encanto. Because you had Louisa on there, mm -hmm. and the animators fought to keep her, like, bulky. And she was crazy popular. And kids loved her. Boys loved her. Girls loved her. Everybody loved her. They were mad there wasn't enough dolls. So Disney had to go back and make more dolls with her for Encanto because people liked her so much. So bullshit you know about this women's bodies you know and and, and people judging that and all that stuff because they made they made her thinner they wanted to make her thinner in a canto and they fought back they made her thinner and less muscular in this show i i, I personally i prefer the i prefer the uh thinner version of the she no but I'm, I'm just saying though that might be why it looks so bad because they yeah. made him change it 
Yeah, well, it might be. Well, okay, let's talk about the uh, overworked effects houses. Right. Um, that's probably part of it, too. Which they bring up. So let's um, go down. And the uh, the lack of, of budget for Disney Plus shows compared to theatrical releases. So then we have the other person, Jessica. It was a gal. Mm. This is a massive undertaking to have a show where the main character is CG. It's terrible that a lot of artists feel rushed and feel that the, the workload is too massive. I agree. I think everybody on this panel is is in is stands in solidarity with all workers. I think that must have been a typo. We stand in solidarity with what they say the truth is. We work with them, but we're not behind the scenes on these long nights and days. If they're feeling pressure, we stand with them and li- we listen to them. Well, I, I agree with you. I mean... They're being rushed, and you have a whole CGI, CG yeah. character as the main character, but you're not giving them the time to do yeah. it. So, um, Tatiana says, I feel incredibly differential, deferential, not <laughs> differential. I feel incredibly indifferent. Now, I feel incredibly differential to how talented these artists are and how quickly they have to work, obviously, much quicker than probably should be given to them in terms of, like churning these things out. We have to be. That's super- why it's called churn. Yeah. We have to be super conscious of the work conditions, which aren't always optimal. So two of the people are like, yes, you know, these people are being overworked and they're not given enough time. And then the one, it's because it's a woman. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, let's go talk about Jamil, Jamila Jamil, who said the fans are right. She said they're normally right. Um, so this is this is what's interesting. This is about, um, you know, just Marvel fans. This is what she said at San Diego. Yeah, San Diego Comic-Con. She said they get a bad rap sometimes online because they're very passionate and they have a lot of opinions. The actor said during an interview with comicbook.com, but if they weren't so passionate, if they didn't have all those opinions, Marvel maybe wouldn't have evolved to what it is now without the fans. So we have them to thank, even if they give us tough love sometimes, normally they're right. And I would like to apply this to any other fandom, Star Wars, she Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Star Lord Trek. of the Rings. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Exactly. And then she does go on to say, you know, it, 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 of course, it depends on, you know, the spirit of how you do it. But um, before she talked about this, too, about the wig mm. and people didn't like the outfit. And she's like, I, it's just a wig. I love the MCU. I love the Marvel fan base. I respect them. And I was merely ma- making sure that they knew that I was with them. I was reassuring them. I'm on their side. And so I never mind any criticism or feedback. As long as it's done in a and not done in a cruel or toxic way, I'm with the Marvel fan base when they push for more. I'm into it. Yeah, I mean that's the thing too. Like people have to be. I mean, I think these studios, to some degree or another, and some are listening more than others. I think they they do kind of take feedback into consideration because look at what happened. Not Disney. Not Disney. Disney is because I mean, you're just automatically a racist asshole. Well, that's what I'm saying. For her to come out and and say that, you know, and say that hey, you know, fans aren't aren't toxic. Um, is something because she is, you know, working with a, a Marvel production. But you look at um, uh, Starfire with the DC, mm-hmm. you know, and her original costume where she looked like a hooker, and then they finally gave Walked her that a- back. And then you know she said that about Marvel, but Disney's also the people behind Star Wars who turn around and if you don't like a character and you have a good reason to like the character, it's automatically because you're a racist or a misogynist or something else. Yeah, Disney's the worst. I mean, here's the thing: I think Disney's Disney's whole thing is uh, you know hubris too. I think they think they're too big to fail, and I think they actually blame the fans when things go wrong, when they make bad decisions. They blame the fans, mm-hmm. they blame the audience, they blame the customer. It's like, look, you gave somebody, uh, you know, a cold meal or a, you know, st- whatever. It's it's your fault. Mm-hmm. You gave them something they didn't like. They sent it back to the kitchen. And it's then their fault. Complain. But she's just basically saying, hey, they're not always wrong. Some, you know, most people aren't toxic assholes. The ones that are, you know, you can disregard. But not if all the fans were that way, we wouldn't get have be as, as far as we are now. Yeah. So the fans kept it here. The fans made it last years. Like Shira, the fans kept it around thirty some years. So they're not the toxic ones. Thank you very much much yeah so anyway hopefully we'll see more of this hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see more of this so we're gonna I like her up. more now yes yeah yeah so please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye